Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me for another episode of Flashlight Basics, where if you are new to the crazy world of LED flashlights, this is a good starting point for some general stuff you need to know. Just a high-level overview, just the basics. Thanks for being here. Let's get into it. Hey gang, what's up? Jason with Prometheus Lights. Thanks for joining me again today. What I want to talk about is why you shouldn't hate lights that step down. Huh? I know you hate them, but there are actually a couple of good benefits to a light that steps down, so let's dive in. All right, so number one, what is a light that steps down? Essentially, depending on the light, it'll come on in full power, and after a certain amount of time, it's gonna start reducing its output. That is the way it works. We're gonna talk about why that has been implemented. There are really two main reasons, uh, and also a little technical note at the end about how your eyes work. So the top two reasons that a light is going to have step down uh, is because we are trying to manage heat in a light that is overpowered. And what I mean by overpowered is a light that generates so much heat, a light of that size, cannot dissipate it into the environment uh, and keep the light cool to the touch or keep it from getting super hot because that can't happen if your light's overpowered. Really the second reason and why I became interested in it uh, is a battery management strategy. So when you have a very powerful light, it consumes the power in the battery much faster. Why do you want it to be bright at the beginning and then step down? We will get into that later, but that is basically about how your eyes and your visual system works and how we can sort of get the most benefit from that. Okay, so heat management. Uh, this is one of our Delta flashlights. One of the things I do with the Prometheus lights is correctly engineer them to manage the amount of heat. So that's one reason we use a regulated driver that basically has an upper limit uh, in terms of how much power you can put into the LEDs. Power is directly correlated to heat. So the more power you're putting into the LED, the more heat you're going to generate. Modern flashlights can be insanely powerful. This light, depending on the LED you put in it, you know, somewhere between 800 and 1200 lumens. That used to be an astronomical amount of power. That's pretty standard these days. You can get small lights that will put out a lot more than that. Do you need that? That's a different topic. But when you're putting a lot of power into a small light, you're going to have to deal with that heat somehow. Now with the alphas and deltas, we actually have active thermal management, so it's measuring the temperature of some of the components and regulating the output to maintain that temperature. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it, which is simpler, is just to have a step down. So, for example, with uh, four sevens lights, the light will operate on burst mode for 30 seconds, and then it will drop down slowly to high mode over the next 30 seconds. So that's a total of a minute. You get 30 seconds of full power and then a slow ramp down as that clock ticks off the next 30 seconds. So if your light is overpowered, it's really about keeping a light at a normal operating temperature. Because if you were to allow that light to continue to run at that power, it's gonna get incredibly hot. It is possible it will get so hot that you can't touch it. It basically turns it into a race car. Now some people are into that. I get it. I like race cars too. That's not something I want to use on a regular basis. So a more moderate solution is to give you that high amount of output, but then moderate it. Now, depending on the way that's implemented, like with the four sevens lights, if you want to go back to full output, you can just turn the light off and then enter burst mode again, and you'll be back up to full power. So if you're an experienced flashlight user, you know, you know how to regulate the temperature of the light, and that is when it gets too hot, you need to turn it down. Like if it's too hot, like if it's uncomfortable to hold, you just need to reduce the power. We sell lights to a lot of just regular people who may not be flashlight experts. So it is walking that middle ground a little bit. You're giving, or we're trying to give you that enthusiast performance while also trying to be safe and reliable um, for all of our other customers who aren't super into flashlights and aren't big enthusiasts. And I think that's really a critical part of good product design. There could be specialty lights that don't have that feature. Again, some kind of hot rod race car thing. 
if you know how to deal with that, that is fine. And if that's what you prefer, that is fine. But again, for us as a business, we sell lights to people. We don't know who that's going to be. So we want it to work well for the enthusiast. We want it to also work well for the regular person. And so we put features into that that I feel like make that possible. Uh, a lot of people absolutely hate lights that step down. They're like, I don't need a babysitter. I can deal with this on my own. And if you know that, that is true. There are some people who need babysitters, let's be honest. And again, part of that is just being reasonable and responsible um, as a business. Like, I don't want to be putting things that we make into people's hands that are dangerous. That just does not make sense to me. And particularly for a flashlight, a flashlight should not be dangerous, you know, 80, 90, 99% of the time. Again, race car, usable tool, two very different things. For some people, having a light that steps down is a deal breaker. And I don't know, honestly, everybody has personal preferences. We can't accommodate 100% of them. I actually, I will admit, I used to be a person who hated light that stepped down. And my position was those lights should not step down because they're engineered incorrectly. I mean, if you need to step the light down because it's getting so hot, that's just bad design. If you want to take that perspective, that's true. But basically, as I designed more lights for more people um, and started to turn this into a business, I realized that, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes you just want a brighter flashlight. But if you're going to do that, there has to be some kind of mechanism to regulate it to take that more high-powered product and make it usable for your average person. Now, for me, really the main thing with the light that steps down is about battery management. As I said before, the brighter your light is, it becomes brighter because you put more power into it. The more power you put into it, the more heat it's gonna generate. All of this means you're draining your battery faster. And frankly, when you're making a bunch of heat, you're wasting that energy as heat. So the real question becomes how much light do you actually need? And again, I am gonna have a whole nother video on how much light you actually need but for the sake of argument, you know, I think we can get to that technical detail, which is how your lights perceive your eyes. No, it doesn't seem quite right. How your eyes perceive light. Basically, you have pupils, right? And your pupils will dilate and contract in order to regulate the amount of light that is hitting your retina to a manageable level that your body can use to, you know, generate information. So your eyes are going to want a happy medium of light. And that's probably actually different for every person, you know, depending on your age, for one, or just your genetics. There's some point in the middle where your eyes are happy. Now, above and below that is the limit of what your pupils can control, right? So when a light gets bright, your pupils are going to contract in order to bring that light down to a more reasonable level. When there's not enough light, your eyes or your pupils are going to dilate to let in more light. So there's this range, operating range of your eyeballs. When you're below that, you can't see very well. When you're above that, at a certain point, you hit what they call is the glare limit, which you're like, ah, too bright, I'm gonna look away. And that's because you've gone past the point where your eyes can handle it. What all of this means is, if this is happy medium and your eyes have this range, if you're producing light that is above that medium limit, any higher than the, what we'll call the right amount of light, that light's being wasted. That energy is being wasted, your battery is being wasted. In effect, when you turn your light on super bright, your eyes are actively trying to block out that light that you're trying to generate. So the real trick here is to generate the right amount of light for your eyes. So you can have as many conversations you want about what is too bright or not, but there is sort of a scientific point where all of that is in equilibrium. So if you have a super bright flashlight running on full power, you're basically wasting a ton of that energy. For me, I want my battery to last as long as possible because you don't want to end up running out of light when you need it because typically that means you can't see anymore. So the way step down works in 4.7's lights, you get 30 seconds of full output. Most of the time, people don't turn on a light and run it for a long period of time. You usually turn it on and you look for something and then you turn it off. Obviously, there are exceptions to that. Again, there's a whole spectrum of use cases. Now, when the light is taking the final 30 seconds to drop down to that high level, 
it is generally imperceptible, right? So you turn the light on, oh, wow, it's bright. Your pupils are going to constrict to block out that light. And as that output is dropping, your pupils are going to be opening. So effectively, the amount of light that's actually going into your eyes is the same, even though your flashlight is producing different amounts of light. And that's really the key here. Again, we want to be really at that right amount that your eyes can handle, neither above nor below. So what that means, yeah, sure, you've turned your light on, burst mode, 100% power, and it's impressive. If you continue to use that light, it's going to drop down. You're not really going to be able to tell the difference in most situations. And once you've done that, you're actually saving a huge amount of electricity in your little battery. The difference between burst mode and high mode, burst mode is 100% high, is actually only 60% output. But again, that increase in brightness is not linear. So let's say a light produces 1,000 lumens. So if you're at 60% output, you're at 600 lumens, right? So the difference between 600 and 1,000 in terms of the way you perceive it, it's essentially a little bit brighter. It's observably brighter, but it's not nearly double. And again, that's just the way your eyes work. All right, so to recap the two reasons why lights step down are typically thermal management, which may mean the light is overpowered and not engineered to handle that power. And so that's a way to deal with it. The second reason, which I think is actually the more compelling one in terms of how you actually use the flashlight and how that works in concert with your eyes, is modulating that power into a range where you as a human being can use it. And by doing so, you're also significantly extending your battery life. So you'll be able to use that light longer when you actually need it. All right, that's all I got for now on this topic. Thanks for stopping by and we will talk to you guys again soon.